Hi, welcome to the Converture video on Virtual to Cloud Conversion. This video assumes the viewer has a working knowledge of the Convert interface. If not, before continuing, you may find it useful to watch the video titled Convert Enterprise Feature Highlights. You may also want to watch its companion video, Convert Enterprise Cloud Feature Highlights. The topic of this video is Virtual to Cloud Conversion, and this video is targeted at Convert users who already have defined their data center infrastructure. This video will not delve into setting up a traditional virtualized environment, but instead will focus on the steps that are specific to cloud-based infrastructures, including designating resources as an infrastructure as a service that will constitute the cloud, and creating virtual data centers in the cloud. In this video demonstration, we will only create one cloud. However, Convert can be used to manage multiple clouds at the same time, even if the clouds are based on different infrastructure types. For example, you may have an Amazon EC2-based cloud an OpenStack cloud, and a local infrastructure cloud, all being managed by one instance of Convert. There are many benefits to doing a virtual to cloud conversion. One benefit is improved resource isolation. A single cloud can support multiple virtual data centers, and Convert Enterprise Cloud creates private networks for each virtual data center isolating network traffic. Also, users can only see resources that belong to their current virtual data center. Additionally, Convert Enterprise Cloud also provides self-service provisioning. Infrastructure details are irrelevant to users who can provision new VMs simply by selecting a template, providing name, and clicking OK. The operations users can perform are constrained by the roles. Convert provides two roles, operators and users. Users have very basic functionality such as starting, stopping, and rebooting VMs. Operators have additional capabilities such as creating new VMs and managing networks. In today's video, we will show how to designate resources to create infrastructure as a service. Each IAS definition is a cloud. After defining the cloud, we will demonstrate how to create virtual data centers in the cloud. Our business scenario is that of a QA organization that is sharing resources amongst two sub-teams within the QA group. One team is focused on ERP apps and the other on security. We will address the problem by creating one cloud that encompasses all the resources of the entire QA organization, then create virtual data centers for each team, one for the ERP team and one for the security team. We will use the two virtual data centers to show resource isolation between virtual data centers and role-based differences. But enough talking, let's see how it's done. On the left side of the screen, you can see the navigation pane. The top level node, data center, reflects local infrastructure being managed. Those familiar with Convert will recognize two new nodes, IAAS and virtual data centers. The IAAS node is where resources to create a cloud are designated. The virtual data center node shows all cloud-based virtual data centers. To create a cloud, right-click on the IAS node and select Add IAS. In the pop-up box, choose the type of IAS that you'll be using. Convert supports Amazon EC2, Eucalyptus, OpenStack, and local infrastructure, which is what we'll be using in the presentation today. In the dialog box that follows, you will be asked to provide some general configuration parameters for your local infrastructure. For this presentation, we'll be designating resources from the QA Lab server pool as a cloud. So let's call this cloud QA IIS. Next, we choose which server pools we would like to utilize in our cloud-based infrastructure. Your IIS may span more than one server pool, but there are some requirements, such as server pools must share storage. For now, let's use the QA Lab server pool. Let's configure the network. You can select one or more networks already defined in your enterprise. We will select the QA IIS network here. Typically, you will also need to select both a VLAN ID pool as well as a public IP pool. The VLAN IDs from the pool are used to create isolated networks, while the public IPs are used to make the VMs accessible on the public network. For our simple demo, we are not going to use these options. To make user-based provisioning of VMs in the cloud easy, Select the templates to which the users will have access. The last step in setting up our infrastructure as a service is to identify the host to provide the network services handled by Convert. Generally speaking, the network server should be a dedicated host. If the infrastructure as a service is configured to use a public IP pool, the network services host must have an interface to the public network. When we save the infrastructure as a service definition, Convert kicks off a task to create the cloud. When that task has been completed, the new cloud will appear under the IAS node. After the infrastructure as a service has been designated, you can create virtual data centers in the cloud. 
Go to the navigation pane and right click on the virtual data centers node and choose provision virtual data center. And then select the infrastructure on which you would like the virtual data centers to be provisioned. We'll choose the cloud we just created, QA IAAS. In the subsequent dialog box, you will be asked to provide configuration parameters in order to provision your virtual data center. In today's presentation, we will create two virtual data centers. Let's start with the virtual data center for the QA ERP team. The name you provide here will be visible in the Convert User Interface. We are asked to select which templates to make available to users. The list you see here is derived from the template set up when configuring the infrastructure of the service. You may select all or only some of the templates. The third step is to define the networking setup. As with templates, the parameters are derived from the infrastructure as a service on which the virtual data center is being provisioned. Previously, we had elected to use the QA VLAN as set up by a network administrator. A default private network for this virtual data center will be created on the VLAN selected. Next, we are asked to define quotas. Quotas provide the important ability of limiting resource allocations to ensure smooth running operations. On the quota page, administrators can set parameters such as the number of VMs allowed, number of vCPUs, memory allocations, and more. Last but not least is identifying which users have access to the virtual data center. For this presentation, we will create two new users, one with each of the roles operator and user, so that we can later demonstrate role-based differences. How to create users is not a key topic in today's video, so I'm going to fast forward past creating the users. Back to the main screen, we can see that the QA ERP virtual data center has been created and appears in the virtual data center list. Now we need to create the virtual data center for the QA security team. The process is identical to the one just completed, so we'll fast forward and show the results of the provisioned virtual data center. Each role within Convert has access to different functionality and the user interface changes accordingly. Let's log in as the QA security manager and see what functionality is available with the operator role. A quick look at the navigation pane reveals a much more limited view of the overall infrastructure. Our manager of the QA Security Virtual Data Center is limited to seeing VMs and templates on which those VMs are based. With Convert Enterprise Cloud, provisioning a virtual machine is very easy for users and operators. The users simply provide a name for the virtual machine and select a template to be used. The rest of the parameters can be garnered from the data provided by the Convert Administrator when provisioning the virtual data center. The operator has a small set of actions that can be performed at the VDC level. The actions shown here are constrained by the resources made available in the virtual data center by the Convert Administrator. For example, if the Convert Administrator did not provide any public IPs, then the operator of the virtual data center would not be able to configure any public IPs. Operators have a more extensive list of actions to perform on virtual machines. This includes everything from provisioning to destroying virtual machines. When logged in as a user, the list of operations that can be performed is much smaller. Here, I'm logged in as a QA security user. Users are limited to performing a few basic operations such as starting and stopping VMs. Next, we'll log into the second virtual data center that we created, which was for the QA ERP team. Even though the ERP virtual data center is running on the same cloud as the security virtual data center, there is complete isolation. For example, the QA ERP manager does not see the virtual machines that were created in the security virtual data center. In this video, we showed how to convert a traditional virtualized infrastructure into a cloud-based infrastructure and build virtual data centers in the cloud. The first step in the process was to configure some of the data center resources as infrastructure as a service to define the cloud, after which we created two new virtual data centers in the cloud. Using those two virtual data centers, a variety of benefits of the cloud-based infrastructure were demonstrated, including resource isolation and automatic creation of VLANs, quotas for shared resources such as number of VMs, vCPUs, memory, and more, roles that provide different privilege levels for different user types. Summarizing what's been covered in this video, with Convert Enterprise Cloud, you get support for public and private clouds running on Amazon EC2, OpenStack, Eucalyptus, and local infrastructure. This video demonstrated how easy it is to convert from a traditional virtualized environment to a cloud-based infrastructure. This video also demonstrated some of the benefits of converting to a cloud-based infrastructure, such as user-based provisioning, resource isolation, and quotas. And thank you for watching this video on virtual cloud conversion 
and we look forward to talking with you in future videos.